This is what we do. Traders, fund managers, and even you at home. We wade through a mountain of economic data looking for clues as to just how good or bad the economy and some of the companies we follow are doing. Why? Because in the long run, the data gives us a read on the economic backdrop and in the end, how your financial assets might perform. Most of the releases are important, but the one that gets the most focus is the Friday jobs numbers we get at the start of every month. Are they rising, falling, or is it something in between? Friday, we got the employment picture for November coming in at 263,000, well above what the street was looking for. But it was wages coming in much higher than expected that put investors on notice. Stocks took an immediate nosedive. Remember, we're in a good news is bad news market. Anything that might force the Fed to push rates higher has weighed on markets all year. But by the end of the day, Stocks crawled almost all the way back into positive territory, closing just below the flat line. So what's going on here? Is this job market hot or not? And what are we supposed to do with that intel when we figure it out? Welcome to The Money Runner. I'm David Nelson. Let me say this right from the start. There are no easy answers from this report. And to make sense of it, we're going to have to dig through the data and parse it out. But by the end of this pod, you're going to have a pretty good idea on what's going on and what lies ahead. The knee-jerk initial reaction to the downside Friday, that was understandable. The wage number was concerning coming in at 0.55, excuse me, 0.55% month over month and close to 5% from a year ago. We're not going to get inflation under control until wage growth starts to come in. We've all heard the stories about a lack of workers. The JOLTS report is a reminder of just how tight it is in certain industries. Yes, the number of job openings is heading lower, but there's still over 10 million jobs out there that need to be filled. At the heart of it, there aren't enough workers for industries that face the consumer. Why are so many unwilling to come back to work? A lot of theories out there, but here's my take. The baby boomer generation made a ton of money in stocks, bonds, and real estate over the last decade. They're pulling the plug. They're calling it a day and starting to retire. Some workers have a lot of savings from government transfers, debt relief, and even stimulus payments. Maybe they feel they don't need to go back to work, at least not yet. You can see it in the numbers. 186,000 workers left the workforce in this report. So what did markets see Friday that forced traders to buy the dip? Because at first glance, we should have been down and stayed down. Let's look at the setup. Earlier in the week, Jay Powell gave a speech and all but completely walked back his comments he made throughout the year. He turned markets upside down. He told investors exactly what they wanted to hear. He all but confirmed the next move for the Fed would be a 50 basis point hike rather than 75, what we've seen at the last four meetings. He also talked about the, he also talked about the need to reduce the pace of hikes. Until this year, many investors, including professional money managers, have only known a Fed that had their back willing to step in and protect asset prices. We even gave it a name, the Fed put. Higher rates are kryptonite for risk assets. And even the prospect of a recession and slowing profits is a lot less scary than a Fed that keeps slamming on the brakes. Jay's speech on Wednesday gave investors hope that he was softening that tough stance. All right, that was Wednesday. Let's pivot to Thursday and the PCE Personal Consumption Expenditure Core Index. Why do we look at this? Simple. The Fed does. They've told us this is an important tool for them in their decision-making and a key component of their outlook on inflation. 5% was better than expected, of course, a little lower than earlier in the year. But anyone can look at this chart and understand we still have a long way to go to get to the Fed's 2% target. Finally, Friday. Like I said earlier, 263,000 was hot, and even hotter was a wage number that at least on the surface shows inflation becoming entrenched in the system. Even Larry Summers, former Secretary of Treasury under Bill Clinton, was quick to point out he was concerned, saying he doubts inflation will fall much with wage growth this hot. Right after the release, 
Two-year yields spiked hard, a strong indication markets were going to walk back much of the gains from Jay's speech. As the day rolled on, yields came in, and like I said earlier, stocks drifted higher. So what's going on here? Ten-year yields actually moved lower on the day, and the yield curve inversion is now close to the deepest this year. People, the way I see it, we're getting a recession. Put up the two-year minus ten-year chart. I know this is kind of wonky, nerd-like data, but it tells a story. This is important intel. You can see that every time the spread between two-year and 10-year yields goes negative, a recession follows. We're at the deepest spread since the early 1980s. If we don't get a recession next year, it would be the first time in a half century a yield curve this inverted got the prediction wrong. I know what you're thinking. How could I be talking about recession if the current jobs market is so strong? Well, dig deeper. The household survey showed that we lost 138,000 jobs. Also, what isn't being picked up in the data yet is round after round of layoffs and the growth engine of our, our economy, technology. Meta, 11,000. Twitter, 3,700, Amazon, 10,000, Microsoft, Robinhood, Lyft, DoorDash, Salesforce, the list goes on and on. Some of this could be right-sizing, looking to maintain profits, but a more likely answer is that business is starting to slow. The most common thread from CEOs at cloud companies like Salesforce, Snowflake, Zscaler, and others, they're all seeing a slowdown. Take a look at a chart of the Wisdom Tree Cloud Computing Fund and put it up against the Technology ETF XLK and the S&P 500. Massive underperformance, and this was the secular growth engine of tech. Finally, we can't have a discussion about the economy without talking about the consumer. For now, consumers are hanging tough and are still spending, but they're doing it with credit. In September, revolving credit rose 12.9%. Sometime soon, as consumers approach that credit limit, they're going to pull back. I think the current strength in this market is that investors believe a coming recession will be mild and that the Fed will come to the rescue even if inflation is above trend. They are also convinced that higher rates are a much bigger burden than a few quarters of negative GDP. If you're shopping for a home, buying a car, starting a business, you know the pain of higher rates. You're living it right now. Recession? Well, it ain't here yet. We'll deal with that tomorrow. We're in a bad news is good news market, but at some point, bad news is going to be bad news. If you like today's pod, please hit subscribe. And if you need to get a message to me, send it to david at moneyrunnerpodcast.com. Thanks for joining me. I'm David Nelson.